that, that's forbidden if we only have quantum mechanics and it's the most not local part. So that, that's quite an interesting question. We, we still didn't understand why quantum mechanics is so special. Yeah. And, and actually, even in the early days about quantum information, people already argue, uh, right is concerned, this is called a forever bank. The forever bank just means that even in old days, if I want to commute by classical resource, I send a qubit, then I can only send a qubit of information. So people are then trying to understand, if I send a quantum qubit, because quantum qubit, in some sense, can, it's more, it's, have more dimension than just zero and one, right? We also the phase information. So, so it, it must be, we can, if we can use this phase information properly, even we send only one qubit, we can send two qubit information to the other side. But this cannot be the case. This is called a Horewa bound. Okay. And actually, recently, I and my students showed that this Horewa bound can be related to the second law of thermodynamics. Yeah. So it means that if Horewa why Horewa bound is true, if we consider some uh, heat engine, we can understand that actually this bound is there because we cannot violate the second law of thermodynamics. So, so the, so I, I draw this example just because uh, there are something deep here. Just even from this uh, very simple consideration, there are something deep that we can understand. Why, why this bound, the communication bound should related to thermodynamics. Yeah. And uh, even the, the information consolidated, actually, we still can use entanglement as an uh, efficient resource. So this is why we have so-called teleportation and dense coding. Means that we actually can send a qubit to the other side, okay, by, by through entanglement and the local measurement and the communication. And also we can have a so-called dense coding. We can call, uh, send a qubit, but we, in some sense through entanglement, we can send in some sense coding to qubit information to the other side. Yeah. So you mentioned there are some theories that are more non-local than quantum mechanics. Yes. Uh, will, will they violate the uh, they, they were not, I'm not so sure at this time, I'm not so sure. But actually, at this level, we, we can see that actually people study some special case and they, they get this kind of diagram. So this these are local theory and these are quantum mechanics region. Okay, uh, and you see that some region which, uh, this this overall framework means that it's a no signal theory. So there are some theory, some probability which cannot be explain by quantum mechanics, but more than local than the quantum mechanics. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's some limitation. This is a division line caused by their inequality. Yeah. Of course, this, this, all this theory is just a they no framework, just a bunch of the probability distribution. Yeah. Obey some spatial condition. But you, you find that quantum mechanics it's still not non-local enough, they are more non-local stuff. <coughs> and if, if the second law of thermodynamics is broken, does it mean that uh, uh, causality is broken? Or what does I, it no, I, I mentioned co uh, forever bound is different from uh, this. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm asking about the second law. If yeah. it is broken, then what's the implication? You mean second law broken? We should not expect. Oh, if second law broken means that Horewa bound, we can buy the Horewa bound. Means that using qubit, we can solve, send more information than the classical bit. Suppose we can only send one qubit information, one bit information by sending the classical bit, right? Okay. But if, if we buy the while Horewa bound can be violated, means that if I send a qubit, there is some way I can send more information than one bit. That's that's strange. Does yeah. it also imply that the time direction can be reversed? But mean, no, no, means that if we you can buy a Horewa means quantum communication have real this real advantage than classical communication. Means that when I send one qubit, then I can send more information than I send a classical qubit. Yeah, but uh, uh, but if if the second law is broken for whatever reason, mm -hmm. I'm asking what would be the consequence or what the I, I didn't know. I, I will not assume second law is when they violate it. Yeah. <laughs> this is why we divide this bound from second law by a 
by studying the quantum circuit model. Then uh, we can go to the second uh, topic. Then how to characterize the entanglement? Okay. So, for I think this is a tough question. Tough question because uh, we all we know is how to characterize the bipartite system. Okay. If we don't know how to characterize the entanglement, or there is no consensus how to characterize entanglement for tripartite system. So, in the bipartite system, it's very simple. We just calculate the reduced density matrix, okay, and then from the reduced density matrix we can diagonalize the reduced density matrix, and then we find the entanglement spectrum, okay. So this is the eigen spectrum of the reduced density matrix. So at the beginning we have the full density matrix, then I trace out the region which I I cannot control, then I get a reduced density matrix. Then I diagonalize uh, this density matrix, I get the entanglement spectrum. Then from entanglement spectrum, I can take a from my entropy. So from my entropy is a monotone, means that it's a monotonic increase function. So if you have more entanglement, then this from my entropy will be larger. So you can characterize the entanglement by uh, taking the from my entropy for any bipartite system. So the simplest uh, uh, case is the Bayer state. So we have this kind of Bayer state, and they are maximally entangled. So, so for two qubit system, I know how to characterize the entanglement. Then you can ask, how about for three qubit system, which are tripartite system? Do, and then I write down any tripartite system, tripartite state. Can I know which state is more entangled than the others in the tripartite sense? And the answer is you don't know. Yeah. So it's still an open question. So, so, so this causes some problem if we try to understand the many body system. We have so many partners, so how can we know which state is more entangled than the others? So we must have some other way to do this. Yeah. So, however, uh, it's quite interesting. For most physical state, actually, the entanglement spectrum is gapped. If you calculate the entanglement spectrum, you find that there is a gap. means that there is a big, there is a dominant eigenstate, which can be understood as an approximate product state. So in some sense, in most system, the the it it can every in most of many body system it can be approximated by product state. You, you can diagonalize the system and then they the dominant component and the other component have a very minor weight. So in this sense, uh, especially only only for very special <coughs> case. Otherwise, for many case, we find that the state actually is in some sense not very entangled. But of course, it's not, it's not a way to avoid the problem. So it's still a problem of what, how do we can characterize the many body uh, entanglement. Yeah. And this procedure is so close. And so to be more concrete, the calculation of this part is so called assuming decomposition. So, so basically, I want to do the, uh, if I have wave function and then I have A part and B part, and I try to decompose the wave function in this way. This is called a singular wave decomposition. But once you can do this, then you, the trace of V is uh, very straightforward. Then you get, get this one. And the Cassi alpha is called an entanglement spectrum. Yeah. And, and then you, once you have entanglement spectrum, actually you can take it more So in some sense, it's, it's a straightforward thing. Yeah. So, of course. If you have a many body wave function, you try to do the bipartite, it's still a very complicated procedure. Okay. And uh, if you have a maximum entangled state, then it's very, the maximum entangled state means that every uh, component has equal weight. Means all the sumi, sumi values are the same. So in this sense, the volume entropy log D is very similar to what we expect for D dimensional system. We have the usual thermal entropy also have this kind of the value for the thermal state. So, to, so in some sense, marginal entangled state, in some sense, in the thermal dynamical sense, it, it could be a thermal equivalent state in this sense. Of, of course, entanglement entropy and the thermal entropy are different quantities, but they have the same uh, future. And uh, in, in fact, not many, not many cases we can take here the, the entanglement spectrum in a concrete way. Only 
for example, in the condensed matter, maybe we have only one or two systems with known half k theory in the spectrum. The famous one is for free fermions. Okay. And then the entanglement Hamiltonian and the correlation function are related by this way. So C is the correlation matrix in the region A. So suppose I, I separate A and the B region, and then I want to calculate the entanglement spectrum by trace out all the B region. Then C the correlation function, but restrict to only region A. Then I can calculate the entanglement spectrum, or entanglement Hamiltonian in this way. So usually it's very difficult to calculate. So even for free formula, actually one can do this. Okay. Uh, I, I, I will say the other case. Okay. We, we, may, we may see this case. Uh, one case they, after this transparency. And uh, the most important feature about entanglement entropy is it op always obey the area law. Okay. So suppose I separate this region by uh, this line. Then the entanglement entropy will dominate usually way the leading term with proportion to the length of this boundary. Okay. So what this implication? This mean implication means that most of the entanglement, if, if this entanglement is caused by the entangled pair, then most entangled pairs are still range. So they must, uh, in some sense, live in near the, this boundary. So I just counting the length. In some sense, I counting the number of the entangled pair. So this is the entanglement entropy. Yeah. And, uh, Besides this area law, actually, there are some universal coefficients which you can calculate through this uh, entanglement entropy. Okay. And, and, uh, this, and so there are some ways to extract this uh, so called refined entanglement. Means that not only area law, because area law, in some sense, is quite expected. And uh, once you calculate entanglement with very big F for you, try to understand if I can extract some underlying information from the, of the theory. And for example, in this one plus one uh, conformal field theory, if we calculate entanglement entropy, you will find that it's not obey the area law because this uh, CFT is gap in system. So it's deviated from area law. If in one plus one case, if this is area law, then it's a constant, but because we are a little bit deviated from the area law. So you take this log L over if show, if show in the UV cutoff. L in some sense is the size of the entangled region, not the boundary size. And the C, in some sense, the central charge. So in some sense, the entanglement entropy will detect the central charge of your conformal field theory. So you can get some universal information from the entanglement entropy. So and, uh, similarly, for two plus one case, if we consider gap theory, we, we find that usually they have this kind of structure. The leading term is still area law because L is now not, not the same as L here. L is a boundary because it's a two dimension, just as in this case. So L is the length of this uh, boundary. And uh, alpha is not universal, but gamma is a universal <coughs> quantity, which are called a topological entanglement, which will characterize topological object. Okay. So, and the generic entanglement spectrum and the entang or entanglement entropy is very difficult to capture. And the, so, in most of cases, we should. It's very hard to calculate. So you, by brutal force, you will do it by replica method. And in the program sense, we can do it by, by calculate some area in the <coughs> And so this why this day this is an industry. People are, there are many people using quantum field theory to calculate entanglement of in the various systems. Excuse me. In two thousand dimensions, is gamma quantized? Uh, gamma is usually the quantized. It's related to a common dimension of the underlying theory. So, so it, it's, it's a specific value. Yeah. It depends on the theory, you have, the, the state you have. Yeah. It doesn't have to be integers, for example. Uh, usually, it, it may not be integer. It may, may be square root 2. It's some, 1 plus 1 plus and square, something like that. Yeah. So this corresponds in some conformal dimension? Quantum dimension. They, in some sense, this theory in the topological order state, they have some quantum group. And this is associated with quantum dimension of some operating quantum group. Yeah. So here, uh, I just show an example. Actually, there are some relation between topological order and quantum entanglement. So for example, we consider uh, a non-trivial state, such as quantum whole state. 
and uh, for example, we consider integer quantum host state, and we calculate quantum entanglement or quantum entanglement entropy, uh, entanglement spectrum. And why we can calculate quantum host state? Because in, in some sense, it, it can be approximated by a free fermion model. So we know free fermion, we can calculate the entanglement spectrum. And the, for example, if I, I have a quantum host system, and then I divided this whole system into A and B part. And then I trace our V part and try to calculate the entanglement spectrum of a reduced density matrix in the A region. Then I find such kind of entanglement spectrum. Okay. And actually, if I do a different shift, they, the, they, the, uh, in some sense, they, they no gap in this entanglement spectrum. Yeah. What, what is KY? K, KY, in some sense, because I, I do this in the lambda gauge. So the whole state have a two quantum number along the y direction. It's a y direction in momentum. Yeah. So you, you can characterize your entanglement spectrum as a function of your quantum number. Okay, this is, in some sense, this is an index of your entanglement spectrum. And then you find a no gap. So in some sense, the, 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 you have a gap closing means that the system have no dominant component in the, in the wave function. So it cannot be approximated by a product state. So in some sense, it, uh, it's a entangled, highly entangled state because I cannot approximate by a product state, so it must be a highly entangled state. I can, and this just shows in the future that they, they no gap in the, your entangled spectrum. Okay. So in some sense, of course, I didn't try to give you an overview, uh, a, a complete view, but actually, through this example, you have the flavor that, flavor that uh, actually, there are some relations I can use uh, quantum entanglement to characterize the topology or the, or the other way around. Yeah, and the recently, uh, I and Lu Chigen and uh, Chiu Da we, we, we do this for a new quantity called a Bach entanglement spectrum for the in integer quantum whole, whole state. What is the Bach entanglement spectrum? So usually we, separ we, 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 we partition the system in this way, is a bipartition. Yeah, suppose you want to do more. So, and the, 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 way, the way to do this is that, I, in some sense, I break the translational symmetry by doing this partition along this x direction, okay. And uh, if I, I want to preserve more translational symmetry, it's better I partition the system in this way, okay. So, so all the white region are the A region, and all the blue region are the B region, okay. And, and even, uh, so it's a, it looks a very complicated problem, okay. But actually, because it, integer quantum whole system is, is, is still a free fermion system, so actually I can calculate entanglement spectrum, and uh, it's very interesting. The entanglement spectrum actually, even I start with the integer quantum whole effect, right? So we know that the integer quantum whole effect have no uh, time reversal symmetry, and <coughs> also it should not have particle hole symmetry, okay. But when I when we calculate entanglement spectrum, we find that for the, if you just fill in a projection for one, then this has particle hole and chiral and time reversal symmetry. So there are something happen we don't understand. So you see, and then we can uh, diagonalize the, the entanglement spectrum and the index by two momentum quantum number. And you see there the cone structure appear in the entanglement spectrum. And it is quite similar to the cone structure in the graphene. Yeah. So the, the most important feature is that at this semi, this this point is when it when we because it's a quantum hole system and it is a check this checkable partition actually implies that actually had one information doesn't show up here because in the quantum hole system we put on a magnetic field so actually there are magnetic flux go through all these planes. And uh, when this, wh where this uh, gap closing point appear, it appear when it's it's it parquet have two pi flux. So if you change your flux a little bit away from two pi, the, the gap closing disappear. So there are some spatial uh, symmetry point which have gap closing, which in some sense is entanglement spectrum by itself is also a topological issue to, to some extent. And, and the, of course, this part in technical spectrum are quite new. Original proposal is, is trying to argue that 
maybe the entanglement spectrum it would be the same as the edge mode spectrum of the topological <coughs> structure. Okay. But in our case, we find that this cannot be the case because we have all kinds of symmetry which in the original quantum model system we don't have for edge state. Okay. But we have maybe have a way to characterize the topological order by studying the symmetry property or back crossing of this uh, quantum uh, of this entanglement spectrum. So and the uh, interesting you go to the feeling fraction two means ch you have a ch chain segment number two. And then, then originally we have two bands, then we have four bands. And we still have level crossing. But this level crossing now is not linear. This level crossing is a direct cone in the linear. But this is a quadratic. Yeah. So it's not very clear why also we have to see this. Yeah. Five minutes only? <laughs> yeah. OK. Right. I, I will wash up. OK. So we may, so that, that's the case we study. Yeah. It's, it's an inch. Just tell you some example you can find. Yeah. Uh, okay. So another topic I want to say something is about the entanglement renormalization enzyme. Okay. So in some sense, even we cannot characterize directly the many body entanglement. In some sense, we can use a, a bipartite entanglement in a local way. In some sense, we can actually. The entanglement actually is base dependent quantity. So you change the basis, you can add or remove the entanglement. So, so if, if I want to characterize some uh, quantum state, actually I can do uh, mani manipulation of local unitary operation. And then the way it's try to remove the, all the entanglement. Okay. So, so we can combine this, uh, this operation with the usual RG procedure. In the usual RG procedure, you want to simplify the state. You just do cross branding. We combine the, for example, we combine these two particles into one new particle. We just do cross branding. But suppose in, in your original state, they the entanglement between nearest neighbor. So the way to to more efficient do this, uh, um, in some sense, to do more to arrive the more simple IR state is before I do the merging, I first do the local inventory to remove, remove the entanglement. So suppose this uh, square box, it, initially these two have uh, entanglement. But after some uh, local inventory, I separate. I just uh, remove the entanglement between these two particles. And then this particle just combine with another particle from this side. So after I done, the, done this way, there is no uh, re entanglement between this box and this box, this region and this region. So in, in this sense, I can remove more and more short range entanglement in order to retain higher entanglement, uh, higher, uh, long, more long range entanglement. Okay. So, so in this way, I can define a new way of doing RG. Not just doing RG by cost grain, you, you, you also doing RG by remove the entanglement step by step. Okay. And in the end of the day, we can arrive more simple uh, state. And the, the interesting thing, the condensed method Condensed matter people study this, they find a surprise result. They find us actually through this uh, well defined multi scale entanglement realization procedure. They find that then you have many steps, right? You have many layers when you do, keep doing this kind of procedure. And they find that in some sense, the part, the part developed by this RG procedure have an ADS like geometry. Of course, here I just uh, mentioned the word. Actually, you should do more calculation, more complicated calculation to verify. So, in some sense, what's U? Huh? Capital U. Uh, this, this U? Yeah, capital U. Uh, this U means that there is a, this, uh, in some sense, this is uh, local inter operation. Do I think about this as RG scale? But U is not RG scale. L is, in some sense, uh, yeah, in some sense, each step has, you, you decree the RG. Yeah, it's kind of logic. Uh, you decree your yeah, degree freedom by two factor of two. Oh, I see. So yeah, kind of what yeah. And you see the length scale of this system also increased by two. So in some sense, you 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 have you do cost range of course you you are changing the scale. So is it some parameter <laughs> in that L that's function of u? Yeah. So there are some parameter to determine. It. So depending on the entanglement situation, 
this u in some sense small u and small w is your parameter. You need to tune this parameter such that you can remove the entanglement as much as possible. Okay. So once you do that, you find that you, you of course by scaling process you already know that it's it's going to be like ADS geometry. So you're not surprised. The surprise is that by doing this, we can all, we can also recover the holographic entanglement entropy. That's a non-trivial statement. Yeah. Otherwise, by scale, you know, it's a, it's a log scale, so it should be ADS geometry. But the important thing we can argue that we can recover the whole grain thing on the entropy. Yeah. So, so the recovery is, that is quite duty because we because we remove the local entanglement. So the high scale, they know you, you already try to isolate the local pair from each other. So they the so-called cause of comb. If you start from this pair, they the cause of comb, which means that what kind of uh, which guy can be influenced by the guy here? Then you can, for a finite interval, you can develop a causal comb. And this causal comb means that outside the causal comb, actually they no, actually they almost no entanglement with this guy. For example, this guy actually have no entanglement with this guy here, actually except the, this D cause this uh, causal boundary, and the the. You count in the link in some sense, just like we count in the entanglement entropy in the ADS geometry in the whole sense. Okay, so so in some sense, people I think first discover first people discover this is Brian Swingle. They they just do this kind of analytic, and then you find that actually there's a relation between the mirror and the holographic entanglement entropy, and, and so it's quite something because of course it, it's hard to make it concrete, but conceptually it seems that. Uh, when we consider ADS CFT correspondence, actually, it's very difficult to understand how this uh, bug gravity emerging out of the CFT. And, and uh, many times people try to do that and they always find something they, they cannot penetrate. And, and the probably the way they do is not right because we totally ignore the. We just do the usual with any energy. We don't take care about. We don't take care of the entanglement. So if we take care of entanglement properly, we can just remove, we can just reproduce the back gravity in this sense. Yeah. Probably I should rush you a little bit. So this, uh, this, this one transparency for what, what we mean for the holographic entanglement. So this was proposed by Ri and Takanagi in the 2006. So in some sense, it's quite a straightforward proposal. For example, if I, I want to calculate the uh, the entanglement for this region on the boundary. And then they propose that the entanglement entropy actually is the area of the minima surface cover this region. Okay. So so originally in the field theory it's very difficult to calculate the entanglement entropy, but in the holographic side we just calculate the area of the minima surface. And the, what I mentioned that the mirror actually can actually recover the minima surface area. So in some sense, the, from mirror you find that the, in, the in, entanglement entropy they calculate is similar to the entanglement entropy calculated from the minima surface. And the, this picture actually is so straightforward and powerful. So actually, you can prove, for example, this uh, relation like a strong subjectivity. Usually, it's very difficult to prove in the quantum emission science. And then you can prove it just by compare the lens in picture way. Then it's very easy. Very easy, you can find that this relation actually just imply this graph. So you can some relation can be proved immediately without going through uh, anything as much frequently. You can just draw the picture and find this will be the case. Uh, and also, I think in, in the past year, they the important uh, progress. They find that for some three core entanglement surface means that you entangling surface is a sphere. Not, not by partition. And in this special case, they find that if you vary your, your shape or your surface, you get a first law of entanglement. And this first law actually gives you the Einstein gravity, Einstein equation on, in the past. So actually, there is a relation between the first law of entanglement.